to go to the grocery store, then go by the post office. Oh, I forgot. I have that dentist appointment at three. After that, laundry and cleaning this house. Ugh, never time for a little rest. I have so many things to do. So many responsibilities. Never thought life would be this busy. Don't you have time to stop and see? I've been told I'm a beautiful flower. Yet, you just walked by without even noticing me. Oh, I I'm sorry. I'm just so busy. I don't have time to look at all the pretties. I must be going. And off the little mouse went, focused on all the things she had to do. Gotcha! Why? Why would you trap me, Mr. Lion? Had I not been so focused on all the things I had to do today, I surely wouldn't have been captured by you. Well, at least you're a busy little mouse. I've been so bored all day long just wandering around the forest, looking for something to do. I wish I was busy like you. Little old me has nothing to look forward to. There, there. Don't cry. I have an idea. If you release me, let me be free, I will repay you. Promise. How are you gonna repay me? I'm the king of the forest. <laughs> but I, I don't feel like I'm the king of anything. I spend my days bored out of my mind. Life is just blah. Ah, Mr. Lion. Sounds like you and me both need a new outlook on life. We gotta start by enjoying life. Smelling the flowers, feeling the sunshine on our faces. There's so much beauty in everything. We just have to start noticing it. When you see a rainbow, maybe it's a message from up above that you are loved just the way you are. When you feel the sunshine, flowers too remember this you're beautiful you're wonderful just by being you rainbow kisses tropical blessings what i want to find ocean breeze big palm trees a peaceful state of a dream of mine It's a way of life A new frame of mind When, when you see, see the, the beauty in everything. everything Oh no, I'm trapped Surely this is the end of me. There's hunters out there and they'll stop at nothing to rid the world of me. Don't say that. You're my friend and I love you. Let's put our heads together and come up with a plan. I'm gonna help you, promise. You are no king of the forest. If you were, you wouldn't have gotten yourself into this cage, now would you? You better enjoy tonight, because this is the last night you will be alive. Tomorrow I come back with my poaching crew to take your teeth and your claws. <gasps> that's right, that's all you're good for. I will be paid a generous amount of money for your teeth and claws. You're in very high demand. <laughs> uh, 
you, my little mouse friend, have shown me how to live. Today was the best day of my life. The wind in our hair, running, playing games, smelling the flowers. I realized how very beautiful life is. If tonight is my last, it was worth it. When you see the stars shine, maybe that's the perfect sign that we are loved from up above, just the way we are. When you go to sleep tonight, remember life was not a fight. I've lived enough. Mr. Lion, Mr. Lion, wake up! While you slept, I nibbled away the bottom of the bamboo cage, loosening the trap door. All you have to do is push with all your might. Come on, show me that you're the king of the forest. We haven't got much time. <laughs> we made it. You saved me. No, we saved each other. <laughs> Tropical blessings What I want to find Ocean breeze Big palm trees A peaceful state of mind Rainbow kisses Tropical blessings Not just a dream of mine It's a way of life A new frame of mind Once upon a time There was a beautiful kingdom where a king and queen lived in a magnificent castle. The queen gave birth to a darling little baby girl. They were so happy. As soon as the baby arrived, it started snowing outside, and the queen said, My dear husband, we shall name her Snow White. And that's how the little girl got her name. Sadly, the mother died when Snow White was very young and her father remarried. But this time, he married a woman who he thought was nice. But guess what? She wasn't. She was secretly an evil witch. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. I am the prettiest of all of the women in the land. No one will ever take my place. I am the queen and will be forever said the evil queen as she looked in the full-length mirror. The mirror always answered back, Of course, my lady. You are the prettiest in the land. No one has your beauty. No one ever can. Years passed, and Snow White grew up to be such a kind-hearted, beautiful woman, despite the evil queen always looking at her with a jealous eye. The evil queen walks over to her full-length mirror and stands in front of it once again. Mirror, mirror on the wall, aren't I the prettiest of them all? Oh, my dear lady, you are pretty, but I must be honest. Snow White is now the prettiest in the land. No one has her beauty. No one ever can. So, the evil queen started throwing a fit. She couldn't stand the thought of someone being prettier than her. It didn't take long for the evil queen to become so jealous that she called one of the hunters that worked for her to come to her room at once. You rang for me, my royal queen? Asked the hunter. Listen to me and listen to me closely. I am ordering you to take Snow White to the woods and get rid of her once and for all, demanded the queen. You mean 
You want me to? Yes. I want her dead. Do you hear me, you worthless fool? Do as you're told. Now! My, my, my. I can't believe what I am reading. How could anyone be so cruel and heartless? Oh, the nerve of that evil queen. Why, I ought to give her a piece of my mind. Oh, let's get back to the story. Late that night, the hunter convinced Snow White to come with him deep into the woods to take care of a sick deer. Snow White was so concerned that she had no hesitation to go with the hunter. She noticed the hunter was cold and shivering as they went deeper into the woods. Excuse me, Mr. Hunterman. I see you are shivering. Let me lend you my cape so you can warm up a bit before we continue on. This made the hunter so sad. He knew what a kind heart Snow White had and he didn't want harm to come to her. Snow White, I, I must tell you the truth. Run, run far away from here as the evil queen has ordered me to kill you. But I can't do such a terrible deed, cried the hunter. And with that, Snow White, trembling with fear, ran as fast as she could through the forest. She didn't know where she was going, but she knew she had to get away from her dreadful stepmother as fast as she could. I have run all night. I am so very tired. Oh, a house. Maybe they have a cup of water for me to drink and a place to rest, if only for a moment. I am done. My name is Wyatt. I am Abel. My name is Robert. Frank and Scott. My name is Dot. <laughs> From that moment, the seven dwarfs and Snow White got along perfectly. In fact, Dan, Wyatt, Abel, Robert, Frank, Scott, and Dot invited Snow White to stay with them. She was thrilled. I will do all the cooking, cleaning, and I will even make your little beds while you're away working. The seven dwarfs were gold miners, and they all loved this living arrangement. You know, sometimes I wish I had someone to cook, clean, and make my bed. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? I could eat chocolates and sip on my raspberry tea all day. Oh boy, my mind is wandering again. All right, back to the story. Back at the castle, the evil queen posed in front of the mirror yet again. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, aren't I the prettiest of them all? She expected the mirror to say she was indeed the prettiest because she assumed Snow White was dead. Oh, my dear lady, you are pretty. But I must be honest, Snow White is now the prettiest in the land. No one has her beauty. No one ever can. And where is this Snow White living? asked the evil queen. You can find her through the forest. You must travel a great distance to a small village called Dwarf Estates. Look for the little house. You will see the beautiful Snow White living with the seven dwarfs. Explained the mirror. The evil queen came up with a deadly plan. Using her magic powers as a witch, she transformed herself into an old beggar woman, and she took a basket filled with apples. But one of the apples, she knew just the one, was a poisoned apple reserved for one special girl, Snow White. Now, before the seven dwarfs left for work, they warned Snow White. 
A little bird visited us last night and warned us that your stepmother is coming for you. So please, Snow White, don't answer the door. Don't talk to strangers. Don't answer door. Don't talk to strangers. Don't answer door. Please, Snow White. Hello. Snow White listened to the dwarfs Hello. and waved goodbye as the dwarfs all lined up and left for work. Oh, hello there, little bunny. And good morning to you, too. I love all my animal friends. Now I need to go make some stew. Just as she was opening the door to go into the little house, she heard someone walk up behind her. Hello there, beautiful girl. Could I offer you an apple? Asked the old lady. If you don't have any money to buy one, it's quite all right. I would like to give you this apple because you are so beautiful, said the old witch. Yes. Snow White was so kind. She felt a little sorry for the old woman. So she talked with her and Snow White took the apple and even paid her a shiny piece of gold that the dwarfs had given her. Only one bite was taken, and that apple was so poisoned that with one little nibble, Snow White fell to the ground. Although she appeared dead, she was only under a spell that could only be broken by a kiss from a true prince. Finally! I will be the most beautiful woman in the world, and I will remain the most beautiful forever, screamed the witch. <laughs> After a hard day of work, the dwarfs came back home and found Snow White lying on the ground, appearing to be dead and they couldn't bring her back to life. They cried and were so very sad, their hearts were broken. <laughs> she is too beautiful to be buried. We will make her a glass coffin so we can see her every day. She can lie in her coffin. We will bring her flowers every morning. She will always be loved, cried the dwarfs. Days passed, and there was a young prince who was passing through the forest. And as soon as he saw the beautiful girl lying in the coffin, he refused to believe she was dead. Who is this beautiful woman? What has happened here? Asked the handsome prince. No, 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 no. The dwarfs told him what had happened, and this saddened the prince. He asked them to open up the coffin. He bent down and kissed her red lips. At that moment, the spell was broken. Snow White opened her eyes, and the two fell in love at first sight. Well, guess what? The prince asked Snow White to marry him. She said yes. yes. The dwarfs were invited to the wedding at the castle, and they all lived happily ever after. Woo! What a story! Oh, I bet you're asking what happened to that wicked old queen, right? Well, she asked the mirror yet again. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. Am I the prettiest of them all? Listen here, you old nasty witch. Don't ask me questions, for your heart is evil, and I will answer you no more. And with that, the mirror shattered into pieces. This upset the evil queen so much that she fell over dead. <gasps> Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the story.
And remember, being beautiful on the inside is so much more important than being beautiful on the outside. Have a kind heart, my friend. Look for more stories on Ruby's Story Time. See you next time. Bye for now. Hello there, Ruby here. I am ever so thankful you joined me today for Ruby's Story Time. This is the story of Little Red Riding Hood, and it gets scary at times. So if I were you, I would get your favorite blanket to snuggle up with, and maybe even one of your stuffed animals to comfort you. There are some moments that can get, well, a little frightening. But don't you worry. It's just a story, and let me assure you, you will be just fine. Are you ready, my friend? Let's begin. Once upon a time, there was a darling little girl named Sarah. She lived with her mother in a cabin near the woods. Her mother enjoyed sewing for Sarah. She made a beautiful red cape for her, and let me tell you something. Little Sarah loved that red cape. She ate with the red cape on. She picked vegetables from the garden with the red cape on. She played in her treehouse with the red cape on, and she even slept in the red cape. She never wanted to part with her red cape, and her mother finally said, "Sarah, I think we should call you Little Red Riding Hood from now on." And from that day on, Sarah had a new name. Little Red Riding Hood was in her treehouse playing tea party with her stuffed animals and dolls, and heard her mom call to her, "Little Red Riding Hood, please come down. We need to have a talk." Little Red Riding Hood could hear in her mother's voice something was bothering her. "What's the matter, mother?" Little Red Riding Hood asked. "I need you to walk through the woods, over to your grandmother's house." She's not feeling well. I have made some fresh chocolate chip cookies, and I think that little treat will cheer her up. This made Little Red Riding Hood smile, as she always looked forward to seeing her grandmother, the sweetest little lady that lived in a small cottage in the woods, and they loved each other dearly. Do you have a grandmother? Ah, oh, let's get back to the story. So the mother made sure to give Little Red Riding Hood the basket of goodies, and reminded her, "Please, stay focused, and remember, stay on the path. Go right to grandmother's house, and never talk to strangers." So off Little Red Riding Hood went. She wasn't afraid, as she had made the trip to grandmother's house many times. She walked and walked through the woods. Little did she know. She was being followed by a very scary wolf. Every step Little Red Riding Hood would take, the wolf would take two steps closer to her. "Good morning, little girl," said the big bad wolf. "You look so pretty in your red little hood." "Oh, thank you, Mr. Wolf. My mother made it for me." "Oh no." Do you remember what her mother told her before taking the journey to Grandma's house? She said never to talk to strangers, didn't she? Goodbye, Mr. Wolf. I'm going to my Grandma's house. She's not feeling very well, and my mom made her some chocolate chip cookies, and I'm gonna go cheer her up. Toodles. And off the little girl went, walking down the path. The wolf had his eye on her the entire time, and you know what? That big bad wolf said to himself, "That little girl looks like she would make a scrumptious meal for me. Why, if I had her for lunch, I wouldn't need to eat anything for quite some time." But the wolf didn't stop there. He stopped her again as she continued to walk. "Oh, little Red Riding Hood." I notice that if you get off the path just a bit, you will find some beautiful wildflowers, 
And wouldn't your grandma just love to have some pretty flowers? Oh, yes, Mr. Wolf, said the little girl. Flowers will really cheer my grandma up. And the big bad wolf gently shoved her off the path. While she was busy picking the flowers for her grandma, the wolf, as sneaky as he was, said to himself, I will run over to Grandma's house and eat her up first. And then I will hide in the house and wait for Little Red Riding Hood to come in. And I will eat her up too. <laughs> what a very hungry, bad, wicked wolf. He finally arrived at Grandmother's house and he knocked on the door. Who's there? called the grandmother from her bed. It's me, <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf in a tiny voice. I have brought you some chocolate chip cookies to cheer you up. Oh, my dear child, the door is unlocked. Just come on in. I am feeling too weak to get up and open the door. Well, here's where the story gets very scary. The wolf came barging in so fast, growling with his big, sharp teeth, and he gobbled up the grandmother. Oh, my. He quickly put on a nightgown, disguising himself as the grandmother, and he hopped in her bed, waiting for precious Little Red Riding Hood to come in. In the meantime, Little Red Riding Hood was able to pick the most beautiful flowers for her grandma, and she was almost to the house. When she finally arrived to the house, she felt a little afraid. She noticed the front door was open. Grandma? Grandma? She walked in the house and into her grandmother's room. The wolf said, Oh, my dear, don't turn the light on. I am very sick, and the light gives me a headache. Just bring your cute little self over here and let me give you a hug. Oh, Grandma, I'm here with cookies and flowers to cheer you up. Little Red Riding Hood came close to hug her and could just barely see her ears. Wow, what big ears you have grown, Grandma. The better to hear you with, my dear. Even though it was dark, her eyes were just adjusting to the room. Grandma... What big eyes you have. The better to see you with, my dear. Grandma, open up your mouth. I will feed you a cookie. Oh, Grandma, what big teeth you have. And then, at that time, the wolf sat up and screamed, The better to eat you with. Little Red Riding Hood was so scared, she screamed and cried, No, no, no and she ran out of the house as fast as she could. She ran over to a tent and noticed that there was a forest ranger sitting by a fire. She told him of this dreadful situation, and the forest ranger said, Let me take a look. So he went into the house and noticed the wolf lying in bed, trying to be all sneaky. Did you gobble up the Little Red Riding Hood's grandma? In a loud voice, he demanded the wolf to spit the grandma out right this instant. The wolf cried, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. <laughs> the forest ranger punched him right smack in the nose and pulled his tail. And the wolf spit the grandma out. <laughs> Woo! Don't you worry. The grandma wasn't harmed. She was just fine. But did she ever have a story to tell? <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood and Grandma enjoyed some cookies and milk before she had to walk back home. As she walked home, she thought to herself, I will never wander off the path that I have been given ever, ever, ever again. Thank you for joining me here on Family Roberto. I hope you enjoyed the story of Little Red Riding Hood. And remember, always stay focused on what you are supposed to be doing and never, ever talk to strangers. Until next time.
Bye, friends.